Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> it's Thursday. That's not Pat. That's not Pat. That's oh, not Pat. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was Pat. The whole time. This whole time. Just trying to. Just sneaking in on <laughs> that motherfucker over there. He is not. Yo, you're real. You're real. He I'm, is real. I've seen him. I <laughs> hope he's not the shadow people. <laughs> no lizard people here. We are. Since 2014, we've been 100% lizard people lizard free. Lizard people free. 100%. We can. We'll show you the. No, we got me a beer. Yeah, that's whatever. Bonk. Ow. You're the one with the plate in your head. <laughs> Oh, cool, cool, That's cool, cool. This stream brought to you by API Gunbags. API Gunbags, literally. Should should you do the I pitch? think you should do the pitch. I think you All have right. To. Well, well, don't let me pay us to do it. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> we'll, we'll credit you this month, oh. this week. <laughs> uh, well, you know them, you love them. API Gunbags. Uh, our patented micro environment technology. Rich with anti corrosion chemistry, uh, providing fail safe rust prevention, coating the inside and outside metal surfaces for that worry free storage. <clears throat> Good for at least five years. It's All just, it's just kind of constantly like off gassing yeah, so inside once, of there, right? So like, once something goes in, something metallic, those molecules are drawn out and drawn to that metal surface. Yeah, yeah. So then once it's fully coated, it doesn't really start anymore until you yeah, put yeah. A new, another object yeah. back in that's pretty cool yeah i use them everything sorry yeah. i use them all the time yeah super affordable uh and i think it's a it's a very cheap insurance policy Absolutely. that i mean you're spending tens hundreds if not thousands of dollars on on your firearms and your ammo ammo especially you might not think your guns mm -hmm. need it or you might interact with your guns enough where you don't want to like use one of these right i mean some guns you if you have multiple guns you definitely have maybe like grandpa's old gun or your dad's old gun yep. that you get it out once a year maybe perfect for that ones. yeah perfect for that uh and then but then the ammo i mean universally we all have you know caches of ammo caches of ammo exactly. and we want to uh preserve and protect those and yeah exactly. api bags are the best you never know too like if you have a power outage and you got golden rods in there you know eventually that you know may that system mm -hmm. may fail so this is a nice little insurance policy we'll say adds a little buffer between guns inside a safe so you don't have to worry as much about dings and scratches sure like no that. that makes a lot of sense because you know it, a gun safe never exactly holds what it says it does so mm -mm. you gotta really cram them in there and that'll let you really cram them in there you might have a 20 gun safe but if you can stack them right up next to each other because they're not going to get hurt in the yeah. bag yep. you might be able to fit 25 in there or whatever yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and we <clears throat> specifically designed them to be very durable i mean they're eight mil thick but also still pliable, so you can mm -hmm. wrap it up tight and not have to lose too much real estate inside that safe. Super cool. Yeah, yeah great stuff, and thank you for sponsoring the stream. It's been awesome. It's been our pleasure. And uh, you also have your little bottles up there of uh, metal defense. Yes. Can you this, tell us about that? Yeah, so this is a great little alternative for firearms that you might not necessarily always have in storage. Um, you know, your daily concealed carries, mm -hmm. your home defense guns, anything that needs to be at the ready. Um, you know, so you can s just spray it, you know, give it a good douse from about four or five inches away, let it dry, wipe off any excess, and you're good to go. That's um, awesome. You know, it's been tested by RPD, uh, Monroe County Sheriff, uh, Doug Turnbull yeah. reviewed it. That's cool. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. to have that kind of. Right. <laughs> just to have him try something out. I'm sure he gets asked all the time. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's, it's been a great addition. To super the cool. Super, super cool. We also have flies in the studio, so if you see us swatting at our faces <laughs> randomly, that's uh, our lovely visitors. Yeah. Uh, we also have another sponsor, Beyond Driven Performance and Fitness, Fitness and Performance, I think, down in Leroy or Leroy, if you prefer. They are one of actually the best gym in Genesee County. They were voted, and it's been confirmed, and it's it's just it's in writing. It's the truth that they are the best gym in Genesee County. They are very uh like science driven i would say like they'll get you hooked up they will analyze everything you're doing your your workouts they have all the computers and gadgets and stuff that they can hook up to you and Maybe. really just deep dive into like okay this is how you can be better in whatever way that means to you exactly yeah, yeah. making it an efficient workout mm -hmm. yeah guided yeah 24 7 access they mm -hmm. constantly i mean i you know 
there's a lot of gyms and it's tough. I mean, I'm not going to knock, you know, anybody who's trying to run any business, but there's a lot of gyms that haven't looked any different, haven't bought any new equipment since 1983. Yeah. And it shows, right? Uh, Beyond Driven, though, they are constantly upgrading, improving new equipment, keeping it nice and clean and fresh and amazing. They just got their, what is it, the, the boxing, the boxing program Beyond going? Boxing. Super, it's, super cool. It's actually where I just was, just at the bag a couple times. Really? Nice. Yeah, yeah, just, 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 yeah. just jog down there real quick. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Quick trip to It's Leroy. that quick. It's that <laughs> quick. Um, arm Battles, Ty, Ty, Arm Battles of Rochester is in the house. Thanks again for Sweet. everything. Should we arm wrestle? You want to wrestle? No. Wrestle. Just too many people snap their wrists. We, re- we just wrestled. <laughs> Regular wrestle, re- re- Greco-Roman style. <laughs> you stay away from my Grecos and my Romans. <laughs> well, uh, to do with that. Can we get a? Do we have a flyer? Do you have any information? Uh, I, I have a flyer now. over there. When is August nineteenth? Look at you. That's commendable. So arm battles of Rochester is arm arm wrestling. Yeah, and we were approached by them to see if we would sponsor the event. We were like, man, that's so cool. That's a no-brainer. Uh, so that is August nineteenth. Uh, yeah, uh, matches start at six at Bitter Honey on Railroad Street um, mm. in Rochester. So if you don't know Bitter Honey, phenomenal. Have you ever been to Bitter Honey? Mm-mm. Oh, one of my favorite places to go. What is it? Um, it's an eatery. They it's it's like Mexican food. Oh, um, nice. They do like delicious tacos yeah, and yeah. their chips and queso are. <laughs> I, love them. I love their. I love he their says you're, you're on point. Yeah, um, so that's awesome. I'm excited. This is their. They're kind of. I think this is their second um, competition they've done. Yeah, and I'm excited to be a part of it. So if you guys are out there watching and you want to have some fun with the uh, TFP crew, August 19th at about 6 p.m., stop out. Yes, I'm, I'm excited. I'll have That'll a few tequila cool. or uh, <laughs> what are the what are the mixed tequilas? What are they called when you do it all together? Um. Okay, draw on a blank with the with the salts on it tequila. margarita, margarita. Yeah. i'll have like three margaritas and you'll see a different side of tyler <laughs> um, <laughs> you think i can get weird sober <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yeah. yeah you haven't seen you haven't seen weird all right cool uh so we've had a lot of fun last weekend was a blast i was at the rochester public market on saturday that was our first appearance Actually, right next to where ever at, oh is it really it's right yeah, over there? oh that's cool you so I know right where it is. yeah yeah uh so that was the firing pins first appearance at the rochester public market right downtown i posted uh we had a spot looking like right at the kettle corn very very dangerous yeah. uh it was a great spot though i mean it seemed like everybody had to like go right around our booth. Everybody goes up one of those pavilions and they go inside. Maybe they do their loops, their laps, whatever. And it was just so much fun connecting with the community. And I think people were really surprised to see. I was surprised that they let us show up. I mean, we're just selling mill syrup stuff. It's not yeah. like we brought any guns or anything, of course, but uh, that's just not a common occurrence. I've shopped at the Rochester public market for years yeah. and you know, you see the produce, you see the people selling stuff like, and they'll sell everything there. Uh, there's all sorts of goodies that they have toys and you know, whatever. So I was like, yeah, it's not like we're selling anything that's against their rules. So yeah, had a lot of fun, gave away a ton of stickers. As you know, those of you that have been following us, uh, when I go to these public events, I will generally bring, I almost have always brought coupons for free military surplus. You just have to come bring it to us here at the store and then you can redeem it for some free awesome. mill syrup. So, yeah, the Rochester Public Market on Saturday, and then I did the Avon Flea Market on Sunday, and we plan on repeating that cycle this weekend. So we've got a uh, special, special boy over there, Tyler. He's going to be at the Rochester Public Market on Saturday. Nice. So that'll be fun. And I have uh, some help on Sunday. I'll be here on Sunday, but we'll have some – uh, representation still in Avon. So some hustling. Yeah, we're trying to, <laughs> we've got some also huge events coming up in September. So September 9th and 10th <laughs> is the Hamburg gun show. I'm just checking my dates here. Yeah. September 9th and 10th is the Hamburg gun show out in Buffalo. So any of our Erie County fans, Niagara County fans, their pistol clerk will be there on site both days 
So you can come find us. We have probably a hundred, maybe 50 to a hundred handguns in stock. We're going to get a few more before that show. Uh, so we'll have some great deals on, on guns at the gun show. Of course, we'll have a ton of military surplus stuff. They're trying to talk me into getting like the whole, there's like a back room or a side room over there. Yeah. And I've got already, I think like 12 tables or whatever at the show. Wow. And he's like, yeah, you, you really got to get this other room. It'd be <laughs> cool if you filled it all up. So we'll see what we can do there. Uh, and then we will also be at the Syracuse gun show on the 19th and 20th. Nice. So that's obviously out at the New York state <laughs> fairgrounds, which is super cool that the state still uh, lets that happen. Yeah. 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 Thank uh, you, New York <laughs> for real. Yeah. 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 That, that's been an uh, institution out there. I think since like the fair has been around, they've been doing it out there. So there's an interesting uh, relationship there somehow with the state where they do allow it. And it's For now. The, the only one that I know of that's on like, state property like that like yeah. a lot of gun shows are on like local fairgrounds or whatever but that's state property so very interesting so we'll be at both of those and i'm trying to think we'll also be at the alexander steam show on the 9th mm -hmm. and 10th we've got a lot of stuff coming up a lot we have a stuff. lot of opportunities to firing pin uh coming up in august and september so and it's a great way to sell non-gun items like api bags and mill serve absolutely it's, it's it's fun um I don't know. I, I used to hate working weekends, but it's going to bring us a new. It's a whole new crowd, you know, especially like, see, when you go to a gun show that, I mean, you're going to run into a lot of customers that know us at the gun mm -hmm. show, but it's a very, you know, distinct crowd of people that go to a gun show. When you go to the public market or the flea market, you're really in with the general public. Mm -hmm. So that's just such a diverse group. And I really am proud that we are. We are not the traditional gun shop. You know, I think if you were to look up what most gun shops, the vibe, the feel of them, we are not that. And I think in a good way. I think we are welcoming to everybody. We're friendly. You know, we're engaging, you know, and we try to treat everybody with respect. And I think people can can see that. Um, we should bring some breakthrough, Joe. We will. Um, because there's a lot of gun owners that are there that, you know, want to get stuff. And that's an easy non yeah, see, not on gun item yeah. uh, to sell. So tasers, tasers did super well. Hmm. Uh, some guy named uh, Mike, Mitchell, Michel, Mitchell. Oh, Mitch. Oh, hey. <laughs> like Claire. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, who? What's this weird diamond by his name? What's that? Oh, is he a top? Oh, because he's a hustler. No. <laughs> no. He's yeah. a top. Oh, fan. he's yeah. a top fan. I knew. <laughs> um, have you ever read the gun shows before? We have done. We did the um, Syracuse gun show earlier. So you, like, as API. As API. Cool. Yep. It's great marketing, yeah. honestly. Um, just getting <laughs> your name out. Yes. Yeah. It was impressive. It's the cheapest billboard you'll ever have. Absolutely. You know. Uh, what about personally? I. It's been a few years since I've been to a gun show. Yeah. Yeah. Anything uh, cool you ever bought from a gun show? Honestly, no. 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 Just tire kicking, unfortunately. I, nothing wrong with that, man. There's a lot to see. Yeah. I've never really been to it. My grandpa took me to a New York gun show long before I even really knew what more than a trigger was. Um, but I have been very spoiled to going to Knob Creek for, mm, for five yeah. times. I would be okay. I don't think they will. They're done. But if they didn't do the shoot, but they did the, the, the gun show, because not like the Knob Creek store, they have a giant store. And then out back, they have like a three or 400 foot long, like pavilion, covered pavilion. And they do a gun show out of there. And man, during the machine gun shoot, I mean, it's absolutely insane. But if they were just to do the show, it would still be nuts. Yeah, that was yeah, definitely ruined by that experience mm -hmm. coming to New York. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Nick says that we have, have the best vibe around nice. for any store in general. And he loves us. Um, not as much as we love you. Nick. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> no, you. Stream yard. What are you doing? On I don't, I don't we be in? know how to... No, nobody. You don't get me a beer. You don't tell me the right length. Oh, jeez. I'm over here by myself, basically. Oh, Brandon. The court here. said there's, Brandon, a, Brandon, there's Brandon, a certain hi. amount of money you're supposed to send. The court said. <laughs> the court said. You take the kids on the weekends. <laughs> Speaking. <laughs> should I tell my my Pennsylvania adventure story? Yeah, please do. Okay. This is a fun one. So a like couple. <laughs> so a couple days back. Well, we've been getting into military surplus, right? We got some cool stuff. This is Air Force ABU, Airman Battle Uniform pattern. They phased it out already. They have a different one, but it's it's basically like digi camo uh, tiger stripe. 
for the air. I love it for air. Yeah. Cause this is what the sky looks like. <laughs> um, so, but these, these are like, this is a really cool, like uh toiletries bag, maybe a little, no idea what little, used for. little tool. I wouldn't know what, yeah. They I don't know what they that. actually use this for. It's very strange. All the other military pouches are always marked. It's like purpose, general purpose. M4 pouch, whatever. Pouch. Yeah. Yeah. Canteen, yeah. whatever. It's Air force figured out. Well, they probably just pull it up on their TV like, in their pouch. <laughs> Yeah, in their Google Glass, <laughs> it's just like boop. It just it shows you in your vision what it is. So, anyways, so we've been buying stuff from the government. The warehouse is down in Pennsylvania that I go to get it from. So I've been just like, you know, bidding on lots and saving them up. Then I'll go down, I'll pick them up, and I'll come back to save on the shipping costs and and whatever. Right. So I go down on Monday, and I took my daughter. Ari, she's going into first grade this year, right? And she's she's been really getting interested in, like, she came to the flea market, the Avon flea market with me, the entire day. That kid woke up at four thirty in the morning with me, hopped in the truck, and like helped me set up, and was like t- telling me to redo the booth because it didn't look as good as it could have. <laughs> like, so she comes with me. We left at like I don't know, like six thirty or seven o'clock Monday night. We drive the five hours down. We get down to like Carlisle, Pennsylvania, at like midnight get into a hotel, we go to sleep, wake up at like seven, get to the, the warehouse, we load up. And if you scroll through our posts, uh, a few pictures, that one I showed you at the beginning, there's a ridiculous picture of my truck and trailer loaded to the brim. I had 600 ammo cans, like 50 cal sized cans. I had 20 giant Pelican hard cases up there. I had, I fit like 15 pallets on an eight pallet truck, right? Uh, and it was all good. Like it was very well secured. I had triple straps on everything. Like I drove from the warehouse. I drove down like a very rough road to jiggle everything around. I pulled over after like five or 10 miles at a gas station, strapped everything down again. She was meant. I get on the turnpike, whatever it is in Pennsylvania. And I get like 30 miles maybe. And I pass two troopers, two Pennsylvania troopers pulled over like waiting for people. And one of them was the van that does like commercial enforcement. And I don't see them pull out, but I see them once they're behind me and I'm like, all right. Like I wasn't speeding like, cause I'm really good about that. Like I wasn't using my phone. I had my kid with me. I'm usually good about it, but I was like, I had my kid with me. So I knew I wasn't. And like, I was like, I don't know what I did, but we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. So they wait, they're behind me for like two or three miles just following me. And like hogging, I'm in the, the driving lane and the one guy's in the path. There's two of them. There's one guy's in the passing lane, like blocking everyone else from passing me. Goes like two or three miles. And then we hit a sign, safety corridor, fines doubled. Soon as my tires cross that line, like lit up. And I'm like, are you? Of course. Oh, so I'm like, namaste, right? Like, yeah, right protect and serve. <laughs> screech the brakes like uh, 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 uh. so i'm like we got my kiddo with me like let's let's be chill about this let's be cool whatever but still at the same time like fuck the state like all right let's go and so i'm pulling oh i pull over he comes up right i had all my stuff and like i didn't have my proof like i have it on your phone now like i never carry the insurance card because i'm stupid uh so i could have gotten it but like i didn't have my insurance for my truck or my trailer on me, like, and they're insured and they're registered and everything, but like, it's, you're supposed to have that stuff, right? And I didn't. So I give him my license. He's like, what, uh, what you got going on here? And I was like, yeah, I'm coming from Gov Planet. And he's like, of course you are. Like I can get every, you know, every other car coming through here is. And he's like, do you own a store? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I own a gun shop. I sell the surplus and stuff. And he goes, all right, why don't you have DOT numbers posted on your truck? And I was like, what do you want numbers? Like, I'm not a semi, like that's only for the big rigs. Right. Or so I thought he goes, no, because you're crossing state lines, you're from New York, anything over 10,000 pounds, you need to have DOT numbers. You got to have like the fire extinguisher, the road triangles. You got to have a physical, you're, you have to do everything that a CDL would do. You just don't have to have an actual CDL license. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I, I am. I know it's not an excuse. 100% ignorant of any of that. Yeah. I've done this like three or four times. You got me. What do we got to do? And uh, he's like, well, we're on the highway. My partner's going to come up, follow him. Let's get you and your kiddo like out of here so you're safer. So they took us over to like a, a parking, like a, a Target parking lot, right? right? Big shopping plaza. So that was nice of them. So then he's there for a while and uh, he signals me to come out of the truck. And I'm like, okay. 
And I, I'm like, I'm not going to get arrested, I know, because it's not yeah. at that level, but it's still like, what's going on? He's like, I don't want to uh, upset your daughter any more than she might already be. You know, and he goes, I want, I should have brought him in. He goes, I got these for you. And he had two patches, like Pennsylvania State Trooper patches. He goes, here's these for your kid. And he's like, you got another kid? He's, you know, whatever. And uh, he goes, good news is there's no fine, no monetary fine. And I don't know what, maybe someone in the comments could chime in what it may have been. I don't know what that would have been. I should have asked just out of curiosity. But he goes, no fine. Bad news is you're out of service. And I go, what? And he's like, yeah, the biggest thing you did wrong. Obviously, you got to register. You got to get all whatever. But the, like the safety side of it, your straps are fine. Like nothing's wrong. He said, but you didn't log your sleep time, your driving time, your resting time, which why would I? I had no yeah, idea. Yeah. And he says, that's okay. the biggest thing. He said, if you had had a log, which you didn't know you had to do, but he's like, if you had a log, I'd overlook everything else. You'd be on your way. He says, I don't know. And it was somewhat true. He's like, I don't know that you haven't been up for the past like 48 hours or whatever. Like, I don't think I would have been safe legally to drive because I didn't. You're supposed to take a 10 hour break. We only had like a seven hour break from when I stopped mm -hmm. driving to when I started or whatever. So, what, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I was educated. He goes, so you got to there's like 40 motels within two miles of here. Hotels. Oh, you got to get one. Yeah. Like get a hotel. Ten hours. And it was like noon. So I was like, I was supposed to be home at like 430. My wife's expecting me. The guys are expecting me. Like my dad's over here waiting to drive the forklift, unload everything. Like, so I was like, all right, well, I'm making phone calls. I'm texting people. Like it's either a friend comes with DOT numbers and everything and gets this stuff, which that's not going to happen. Like that doesn't make sense. Or yeah, we spend the night. So we spend the night. So my kid, as soon as the cop's done, she goes, can we go to Target? <laughs> like that's what she wanted. So we did. Cause it was like, by that time it was like one o'clock. I'd made a hotel reservation for three o'clock mm -hmm. check in. Oh, so it's like, I got a couple hours to kill. So yeah, we go to target, we walk, I get her some Legos, you know, something to just keep her busy, get to the hotel. We check in. I'm just done. I'm, you know, just mentally and just whatever. So I'm like, hi, ah, whatever. So I'm sitting there. We order a pizza, sitting on the bed, eating the pizza. I think I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I wait. And there's a mouse in our room like, so i just keep, yeah like there's a little tiny mouse and he was cute so and good. my daughter was so upset that she didn't get to see him like all she saw was the picture that i took of him he was cute but i was like yeah we can't stay in this room and like i'm i'm not one of those guys that like complains to get the free stuff but you know like i'm gonna call and say there's a mouse in our room and i should get something for that right or whatever so we switch rooms we're good okay we get the rest we wake up i woke up at you know, I could have I could have driven with the time that we had to stop. I could have started driving at like 11 or midnight or whatever, 11 yeah, p.m. or midnight. Asleep, I'm not doing yeah, that. Yeah. Right. So let's get the full night's rest. So actually, I, I ended up waking up at like four. I probably went to sleep at like 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. Uh, oh, shocker. Right, that's a normal time <laughs> for me. I'm usually out by then. Uh, so then we wake up at like 4 a.m., get on the road. We get all the way home. We get to mumford we're on route 36 here 16 17 miles from home and i pass in opposite directions a new york state trooper van and the vans all they do is commercial enforcement Ooh. wouldn't you know it yep does a u-turn and i'm like oh, are you fucking kidding me bitch. i just pull over i knew he's coming for me i pull over and so he comes up and he's like kind of smirking He's like looking at my truck because he's like putting. I, 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 we got I gotta get the photo of some here on you. Look, look up the photo. It's I posted it. I look like the Beverly Hillbillies. I mean, it was ridiculous. So, he's like, "What are you doing?" And I give. I literally, I pull everything out of my visor. It was like the patches from the trooper. Like, here's the ticket. Like, I've I was already like, been reamed. I, I did this yesterday. I know I'm wrong. Like, just do what you gotta do. <laughs> so we start talking. He's like, "Oh, you know, you know, the firing pin. He knew of it. You know." Course, right? yeah. and, uh, naturally, <laughs> and so naturally. he's you know where are you from he's like oh this road like i know is that over by this intersection he's like wait what house are you and i keep you know and i was like yeah i'm the one with this and he goes oh he says i drive past your house every morning like i'm the only trooper van that will drive past your house <laughs> like that's me and so long story short he's like i'll come over we'll like set an appointment or something and he's gonna come over and basically like walk me through so that I could pass every DOT inspection that we'll ever get. So That's, it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, he definitely, you know, I, you know, we're not anti-cop. We certainly are not like 
you know, uh, bootlickers from that perspective either. Just don't but like the government. I will, yeah, like individuals that treat me with respect, I respect them too. Absolutely. And they were both both troopers, very respectful interactions. Those were good. Those were yeah. good. That's the good side of policing. Like not that's how it should be. With fines, right. like that's how it should be. And- right. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 So uh, they went very well. And then the to top it all off, so I dropped everything off. I, I probably at like, I don't know, like noon, I left, right? I get back home, clean up a little bit, and I felt guilty because I'd like dropped all this stuff on the boys. And I was like, all right, guys, like, here you go. sort all this shit out, like 14 pounds of stuff. So I go home. I had to get the kiddo home, though, right? And like clean up and stuff. So I come back. As soon as I leave my house, I'm like a mile from my house in my truck. Don't I pass again that same trooper in the van? And I can see him laugh his ass off, and I'm laughing my and I'm waving at him, and like, okay. So now, like, I guess I don't know what our first date is, but like, you know. <laughs> oh. welcome to Pennsylvania. Show us your log. That sounds familiar to something else. Wait, no, yeah, Mike, Mike knows, Mike knows, yeah, yeah. Show us your log. But yeah, so I, I was totally ignorant of it, but. Uh, if you're over 10,000 pounds, yeah, and you're doing stuff like for a business, you got to have DOT numbers and stuff, and, and there's rules, I guess. So did they check that you were over 10,000 pounds, or were they just like, that so, load looks huge? Uh, they knew they knew just based off my truck and the trailer. Okay. There was no – because it's not what you're carrying. It's what the weight rating is. Oh, the whole so life. they were like, we know these new Chevys are up there anyways – so any trailer behind any like any Chevy 2500 like mine is the the weight of my truck alone is 10,650. So just my truck is over that limit. So uh, you're kind of screwed no matter what. So you put any trailer on it no matter what and you're screwed but there's like I mean I'm trying to think of you know, like those those army trailers, those are rated at like 4,200 pounds. Mm-hmm. So even if you had like a normal like a F-150 that's maybe rated at like seven or 8,000 pounds, the truck alone was good. But yeah, as soon as you put the trailer on it, you're you're screwed. And it was kind of funny. In, sorry, in Pennsylvania, I was like, why'd you, you know, I, I know why, but like, why'd you pull me over? And he's like, well, it was just one of those things like you, you nailed like five, like New York plate, no DOT number that I could see. You might have had one, but I couldn't see it. And then like, gestures broadly at my side. <laughs> he's like you're kind of obvious he's like if you'd had one if you'd had one pallet that could just be something you bought for yourself i'm not gonna bother it it's not worth my time this amount of stuff you're clearly hauling for a business you're either someone hired you to haul it or you're yeah. it's for you and it's for a business and he said the the reason he didn't find me either was because he says he pulls and he does this all day every been doing it for 20 years and he goes the guys that try to lie and be like, oh no, this is all for my for me. I'm a crazy prepper. He's like, I have a phone. I have your license. I Googled who you are. I mean, you told me who you are. Yeah. But he's like, if you're just, you know, if you just say, oh, I'm Tyler Mira, I'm just some guy. He's like, well, I'm gonna Google Tyler Mira of roughly this road and address. And oh, comes up, runs or owns the firing pin. Like, yeah. Yeah. okay, you lied to me, thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar fine, whatever it is. But so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So do you have to have like commercial plates? So my truck does have, it came with commercial plates, which I didn't understand the implication of, yeah, 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 Yeah. any of that. So I have, uh, I'm submitting all the stuff for my DOT. I got to get a physical. I got to get like, yeah, Mm -hmm. the whole thing. It's a whole thing. You got a finger? Yeah. That kind of physical. I told you we were going to do it on the stream. You uh, have you heard this? The week I'm on. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. (laughs) <laughs> he wants to do a live prostate exam. For oh, charity. What? For <laughs> charity. That is so dumb. For charity. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch that. I don't know. Let the people speak. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all Google Tyler together. Being awful presumptuous. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. John says I could make a comedy sketch about that trip. Thank you, John. That's <laughs> that's fun. That's fun. Let's all Google Tyler together. Yes. That's a scary thought. I mean, all you get is just me burning alive. You have to go onto the dark web oh, to get the real good results. <laughs> Download. He, he doesn't know my humor yet. Oh, well, it's okay. warm you'll learn. You'll learn. Mostly based around <laughs> foreskin. Yeah, that, the foreskin. <laughs> foreskin <laughs> burn alive. <laughs> Jesus you Christ. You burn alive? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> when uh, so... <laughs> Basically, moral of my story is I went through hell and back to get to these freaking Milser pouches. So come buy some, please. Please. Well, I have. Can they see this one? This one's pretty cool. These are Marine Corps USMC 
It just says pack, USMC pack. Uh, and you need a frame. I mean, you don't need a frame, but these were designed like there's no actual like backpack straps on these. But these were designed for like those those Alice frames or like the, you know, the hard yeah. external framed pack. So that would secure into there. But you can just use it as like a big duffel. It's got two nice big handles on here, another big one up here. And this is easily like a 60 or 70, maybe even 80 liter, uh, maybe even bigger. I don't know. I'd have to do some math. That might be which I'm pushing good like at. one. It's like big. It might even be a 100 yeah. liter. Yeah. By the time you like open it all up and That's stuff. Like I nice. mean, it's wide. So it mm-hmm. might even be mm-hmm. like 120. And it's brand new. They are brand new. Yeah. 30 bucks. I tried looking these up. The closest I could find other surplus people selling does it have a uh, will be like a hundred to one hundred and fifty. So does it have I think an you could put a bladder in there. Does it have an NSN on it? It does. You might be able to search that. There you go. GSA. Yeah, yeah. I'll scan the QR code. See what happens. QR code. It's uh, Eagle Industries. Good shit. Uh, Thirty bucks. Can't go wrong. We've got yeah. uh, a, like a bin of those, a pallet of those. What else did we get? We got. These are little like admin pouches, right? That's the Air Force Digital, the ABU, mm-hmm. five bucks. Any of these style patches or patches, pouches, five bucks. This is uh, is this the radio one or is that like a double mag? That might be a, a mag. Rip. Is it? Yeah, yeah. I put a buckle on a mag pouch. I don't think so. It's a radio pouch. Who would know? We don't label it. Read the yeah. Do they have magazines in there? I, I, that's why they're secure. <laughs> the security. You don't actually use it, but you have it. <laughs> Uh, we got used now jeans that I think was Tyler's favorite. If you need a water bottle for your dog, we have used now jeans for a buck, right. so you can't beat that. Uh, we got a bunch of spider coats, <laughs> we got a bunch of cool spider coats in. We should have pulled out one of the birds, like you just did. Whip out a bird. <laughs> we got like the t- spider coat makes like this little tiny, like keychain knife. We got like that one, and there's one that's like slightly bigger, there's one that's like slightly bigger. And there's like, they're like little nesting dolls almost until you get to like an actual, uh, it's just off frame. There's like an actual like knife size, like that one. But yeah. Do we have any questions? I don't think we got any uh, questions. This uh... I have, I have questions. Oh, I know you have questions. Patrick says uh, Eagle Industries is excellent kit. Yeah, we miss Pat. Mm-hmm. If only he'd be on stream. Wah, wah. He's done. He's retiring. I get it. No, I get it too, yeah. <laughs> Mitch says the old guy in the room to Pat. <laughs> That's good stuff. So, what's your question? I want to talk to our guests. Where kids come from? The storks. <laughs> the storks. Yes. Idiot. Yes. <laughs> Idiot. What's this? Yeah. Okay. Oh shit. Yeah. First. Jeez. Jeremiah, open it up. Do you have a knife? I don't. I don't want to cut myself. <laughs> not. Is this yours? I'm not qualified. I guess it is now. Yeah. So we don't want it. I'll take it. I stabbed it through the. So this came from our good friend, Sergeant First Class, Jeremiah Bryan. Fresh from from Parts Unknown. It's actually classified. I can't tell you where he is. Uh, Someplace hot. Someplace overseas. Cut towards myself on camera. Literally protecting your freedoms right now. But he loves us so much. Like, in between keeping you free... He went out and he got us a little care package. So go ahead and open this. You can send us care packages too. We'll open them live <laughs> yes. on the stream. Should we invite that? I would definitely invite that. <laughs> 8240 Buffalo Road. I'll even put that in the chat. So this is kind of cool. He packaged it with uh, Stars and Stripes oh, nice. newsletter or newspaper, which is like the Army newspaper. That's Stars, cool. Stars and Stripes. Cool. <laughs> Look at this. So here's a little like little tag of who it is oh my god he's turned out amazing Whoa. look at those here look at that whoops those are amazing those look sweet this is an amazing that has firing to pin absolutely yeah that's awesome thank you so much jeremy you. you you are yeah. too cool and oh he said something else been so cool he said something else in here he's like a sharp this is supposed to be for pat but man i don't know because He's not here. This is pretty cool. That so is this, really cool. This might, yeah. I guess, Docs. I was trying to keep it secret where he is, but I'm pretty sure this is from like the, the PX at the base. So, this is from uh, <laughs> Sergeant First Class Prime. Thank you so much. Bro. Thank you, dude. It'd be so cool if we started getting fan mail. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this was for Pat, but I don't know. It's a large. I think you can you can fit into it. Midriff shirt. 
Yeah, just, you got it. Bulk it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should I do it right now? It. Should I take this off right now? Yeah. Oh, live, from live on stream? <laughs> no, we're having it. Fair no, warning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do anyway. It's so sore. <laughs> oh, so this has got to go up. Just like how we used Sharp. to, man. Patch wall. You can go right up there. That's the first patch on the patch wall. So we should probably put another one up because you can't even see it over there. We'll put another one up. Dude. These are limited. No one gets this. Is nice. I like this. Isn't that cool? It's cool. It's uh, nice how it's serrated almost all yeah. the time. Except for the tips. Just the tips not serrated. I kind of like that the tips not serrated. A little pokey. Yeah. What were you telling me about the steel? Basically. This will make it, it rust. I was going to say, should we like... Yeah. Should we get another one? We'll use that one as a control. Can we spray it? And then we'll, it. we'll spray Take it with the metal defense. This is actually really exciting. Like, we've talked about metal defense, and now we're actually carrying metal defense. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're just about to do this. Uh, yeah. Not in front of the fan. <laughs> <laughs> not in front of the fan. Oh, my God. Yeah. And just let it dry. You just let it dry, right? Just let it dry. Cool. I like the smell. The smell? It smells so good. It's a nice smell. And what's retail on this again? $14.99. $14.99. Sweet. And that's so. a good amount. I mean, it's a that'll last style. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were spraying all day, every day at the uh, Freedom Weekend. Yeah, I remember. And we were we only went through about half a bottle. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, it, I'm so excited last. to finally have it. Yeah. Um, are you able to go into Metal Defense at all? Like the company and all that stuff? <clears throat> yeah, so we actually, uh, we are the main distributor for Metal Defense. We actually work with Cop Gear Inc., uh, also New York Police Supply over on uh, East Ridge Road. They were the ones that developed this. Uh, they worked with RPD, Monroe County Sheriff, Doug Turnbull. Um, but he's got such huge contracts with N NYPD for armor and whatnot that uh, he just didn't have the time and resources. And uh, uh, my partner, Mitch, had been in contact with him a lot. Um, so we decided, Hey, you know, this is a great addition. All of our storage bags are, you know, the best that you can get for a storage bag. But if you have a daily concealed carry or a mm -hmm. home defense gun that you need to get through quickly, the bags, obviously just, you know, you don't want to be ripping through that. Opening it and closing yeah. It and yeah. So just spraying stuff down with that, you know, anything that needs to be at the ready, mm -hmm. so to speak. So it's a great, it's a great addition to the family. Absolutely. For it makes your a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Plus, you know, you can use it on, you know, Household tools, jewelry. I don't know if you really want to do that. Yeah, your wedding you know, ring. Like, sure, my wife anything, you know, anything, anything metal, you know, like yard tools. Uh, people uh, use it on spare automobile parts, like if they have race cars and stuff like that. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. So, Did I use too much? I mean, she looks she's, a little she's, drippy. She's, she's a little soaked. Um, you can always wipe off some excess if you okay. want to, but. But you're supposed to let it dry, right? Just, just, yeah, let, just it let it evaporate. Right. Yeah. yeah, so it's delivered with a. Uh, a solvent and then that solvent will evaporate off leaving the uh sweet sweet <laughs> gun grabber tears behind <laughs> gun grabber tears behind um do you guys have anything else in the works so that you can that you can talk about I understand. yeah we can talk about we no actually of people watching so uh we will also start carrying breakthrough cleaning products cool very uh, cool because we're always like hey put a clean gun in the bag it's kind of like when eggo waffles came out with yeah. eggo syrup you're like <laughs> like, <right? laughs> yeah. You're telling us to clean it, but might as well sell it. Clean. Yeah, makes but a lot what's of sense. nice too about them is they're also it, you know, American made, which is something that we strive extremely 100%. hard to keep. Hundred percent. So and that's why we one of the reasons we many reasons we love you. Um, it'd be really cool if you guys did like a package deal. Like Absolutely. Oh yeah. Rifle kit, cleaning kit, metal defense. Yep. Yeah. So we we have kits right now based on like the popularity of bags you know like we have our shooter bundle so it's like three pistol two rifle and a 50 cal you know can liner and you know we'll be making new kits with the model defense and very cool break through, uh, break, break through as well how long have you guys been around so we mitch and i started arms preservation inc in march of 2021 oh wow that's soon i thought it was like no but so i had actually worked uh i was the program manager for z core from 2010 to 2017 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got years of experience with this. Um, I learned a lot with export preservation packaging, um, and the man old manufacturer of Z Corps had actually worked with uh, the Marine Corps on uh, new uh, M16 A2 storage back in like 2005. I had it tested at Tobihana, <clears throat> and uh, so it's just been it's been tested. 
It's been around for a long time. I didn't realize you guys were so new. That's really cool. Yeah, That's so, really, yeah, really API, cool. AP, the, the name API is very new, uh, but I, I brought over a lot of the design designs that I had worked on at Z-Core before it, it, that line eventually shut down um, and very brought that cool. over. You know, brought over what we knew was good. Uh, those old bags under Z-Core were a foil, foil bag, but we always had a lot of questions about, hey, can we get a translucent bag so we can just rapidly identify what's in the bag yeah, sure so yeah, that's yeah. the design uh, design route that we want with the new api bags i don't know if you brought them over but i have some old decor bags yeah. probably from you Most i'm likely, assuming yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah i probably had given them to denverogio i think so yeah. yeah 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 i think so it's crazy how we're all connected it's, yeah. it's so <laughs> weird. it's a small like, industry i love it. it it is a small yeah. industry um quick shout out before we keep talking uh Gemma says hi yeah Gemma's birthday is sunday oh yeah happy birthday early birthday oh um 49 again yep <laughs> uh how often do you have to reapply metal defense so if you spray it and put it in your safe uh, i'd give it about two years if you're daily carrying it you know after you know maybe a month or two of good heavy use yeah give it a little just quick spray do you know if that fouls powders and stuff for like I know you sprayed my cannon, and I'm scared to spray it inside the cannon. I wouldn't spray it inside. The okay. Cannon. Well, you know, if you're going to be using it anytime soon, it does dry to a, a a dry touch. You know, it doesn't really leave a film behind, so it's not like it's going to gum up the works or anything. But I wouldn't necessarily spray it like right onto live ammo. Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. But um, yeah. uh, can we get more into your personal life? Because I want to know more about Jason. Sure. Uh, when what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, there's a lot. Oh, you're <laughs> gonna, you're, oh, gonna, oh, you're gonna regret. Question. You're very gonna much gonna regret this. <laughs> well, now I'm gonna run with that. She said no. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to no very well. <laughs> I'm um, up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. When uh, what was the first memorable experience you had shooting a gun? Uh, my father took me squirrel hunting with a, I think, believe it was an Ithaca 410 single nice. single shot break. That's cool. Nice. So I used to go squirrel hunting with him. Um, How uh, old? Roughly. Maybe 12, 12? Or 13. So yeah, it's, uh, I grew up around guns. You know, my, my family was always a bunch of hunters. Uh, so it's something that I've always just had. Yeah. You know. so yeah. <clears throat> it was always just a you know, something I gravitated towards. So being able to uh, offer my, you know, whatever I can to the 2A industry is, is, it's exciting. Oh yeah. And I'm happy to see that. Like, I don't know, people that, my people, our people that grow up in the gun industry and they start working in the gun industry and some products for the gun industry are, fills my heart, man. I love it. Like you got to keep that going. And all I can think about is like, our kids or our kids' kids, like exactly. that next generation inspiring them to work in the gun industry. Oh, like I have a, uh, a four-year-old daughter and she loves... She's very cute, by the way. I love seeing you. your Instagram pictures. She loves coming out to the garage and uh, helping helping work with gun bags. That's and, so cool. Yeah, so she's hopefully, you know, you know, someday, 30 years down the line when I'm ready to hang up my hat, she might be interested hopefully. in take, taking the reins, you know? Nice. We'll see. Yeah. I know you have a lot of questions that you want to ask about anatomy, but first... <laughs> Donna, <laughs> Donna asks if we sell reloading supplies and equipment, and is that something that's going to have to go through Nix now? So mm. for those of you that may not have heard, we are getting closer and closer and closer to New York becoming not only a point of contact state, which I'll go into in a minute, but also having a ammo background check that has to be done every time, no matter you're buying one box of 22, uh, you're going to potentially here in theory have to do a background check on and be that. charged for it and be charged for it. The NSSF, that's the trade group that uh, all of the gun dealers like belong to. They're the ones that put on shot show every year. The NSSF had a, a liaison call on our behalf with New York state. They sent out a summary of that uh, phone call and basically, yeah, New York is moving to, like I said, a point of contact state. I'll go over that in a minute. And the ammo background check. So there's going to be fees associated with that. Right now, they're set at $7 for a gun background check and $2.50 for an ammo background check. For no. Completely arbitrary. They pull those numbers out of their butt. So next year, I'm sure it's going to be more. Next year, I'm sure it's going to be more, right? So point of contact state, what that means, they're still not 100% sure. What it means, and the NSSF even said that, like New York State has no idea what they're doing, 
Generally, what that means, though, is that so right now we pay. Oh, I knocked that patch down. We pay for the federal NICS program through federal tax dollars. The FBI has this massive facility. Literally a thousand plus people at any given time are sitting in this massive building in Virginia, West Virginia, and they're doing the background checks. Like if you, when we run your background check, it's all based on descriptions. It's all, you know, your birthday is this, your birthplace was this, social security number is this. So they run that information through the backgrounds. If it comes up with no matches, you get an instant proceed. That's when you get an instant proceed. If it comes back with a match, now, if it comes back with, oh, yeah, Jason's a convicted felon in New York, then it's an instant deny. If it just says, there's a record for Jason, sometimes that's all it says. That's when you could get a delay. So there's thousands of people that are waiting through all these things. What's going to happen is coming up here in September, supposedly September 13th is the date that's put out. New York now will run those checks for us. So we, as the dealer, will no longer contact Nick's directly we will either through a website or through the phone, we will have to call the state police. And do exactly what I was doing before. And do exactly <laughs> the same process, but now the state police get all of that information and then they contact Nix and do the background check, get the answer. Supposedly they say this makes us safer because the state can go through more records than Nix would have and other information that Nix would have. And I will get to why that's extremely scary in a second. So they will now have. So when you come in to buy a gun, I'm going to take your information on the 4473 in the old system. When I called Nix legally, federally, they are bound. They cannot keep any of that information. It has to purge overnight, every 24 hours or whatever it is, it gets purged. There'll be a record that, like, on this date, background check XYZ was run, but they'll have none of your information stored. They legally cannot do it. Do you think New York State has that restriction? Absolutely not. No. So you could be 100% certain that every one of those details will be recorded every single time. They will know the superintendent and, and all the Letitia Janes and Hochul will be sitting there saying, wow, Jason did 14 background checks last year, like, we should do um, something gun, about that. Gun. Right. And this, and They'll have all of it. And... They'll have all of it. They will also, we are required <laughs> to not only keep a bound book federally for the feds. We took this gun in from this person or this company or distributor. We sold it to X, Y, you know, whoever on this 4473 on this date. Here's all their info. It's how they trace guns when there's crimes committed. New York state now also requires us to have a bound book for them. Right. The difference is the feds, they only ask for single guns like this gun was recovered in a crime scene. Read us or, you know, give us the info on Glock one, two, three, four. New York state requires us to send our entire bound book every six months to them. So they will have just the entirety of the record. It's, it's in the law. There's nothing uh, there other than, you know, challenging the law and fighting the law. There's nothing really that we can do about it. So the thing that scares me, so I'll get to you. Yes, student. Uh, I, the, the thing that really scares me, their comment about they, they distinctly mentioned that there are there is a possible scenario of someone getting approved to buy a firearm because there's very distinct metrics and measures. And have you been convicted of this or that or whatever? There's a distinct scenario where someone could purchase a firearm and be approved for a firearm, but denied for ammunition. The reason I think that that could happen, because what 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 law, what crime could you commit? That would be bad enough where you could no longer buy ammunition, but that would you could still buy a gun. I can't think of one. There might be ones out there. I think what's going to happen is they've already hired and they're advertising for all of these cyber background check people. And they're, they're looking at all of our social media. So I truthfully think that they are going to have some type of metric of, oh, this person has made some type of comment. And we're going to red flag them essentially, or maybe it'll be like a mm -hmm. not as red, a, you know, a magenta flag. It's a soft red flag that's in the back. You know, you've, you've been blacklisted basically. Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? Um, yeah. You, you know, you're on the TSA, no fly list, essentially New York state can just, the superintendent of state police can just say, I'm going to make a list of people that we disqualify from owning ammo. If you've ever commented on these types of political pages, yeah. if you've done X, Y, and Z and uh, I, there's not much we can do to stop them. I mean, they're the ones, you know, it's kind of the, like the, 
the police have investigated themselves and found they've done nothing wrong. So it's yeah. like if the if the people that want to take all of your firearms away are now the arbiter of whether you get items or not, that's not a good system. That's just not a good system. Uh, so Donna, to go back, we don't sell reloading supply. Well, we do. We have small pistol primers, or we did. We are trying to get more of that stuff in because at the present time that is not covered under any of this legislation. So I think a way for us to protest these laws and show them how ineffective they are and ridiculous they are is if all of us get into reloading and you can bypass all of that stuff. There's not a background check on components. There's not a background check on uh, reloading presses. And uh, sorry, you had a question. Just piggyback on Young that. Man. All week I've been thinking about how to protest all of this. And I just thought about it live on air. Dare I say it? No filter. Let's okay. hear it. What, what if go wrong? the day it goes live, we rally, try to get thousands of people in here. We run a deal, just free 22 ammo. We run a thousand, 22, 2,000, through 22. The, through the thing. Crash the system. Through their system. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah, it doesn't yeah. work. Oh. And then, but we have to have lawyers on standby ready to sue because, you know what I mean? Like, right. Right. right delayed. Yeah. Right. And so that's a huge other question. I mean, Nix is open. And I'm surprised that they've gone s to such lengths to be open as much as they are, like time wise. Like you can get a background check done. I mean, if you do it on the computer, you can do it. I think it's open 24 hours. But you can call and talk to a human in West Virginia up to like three in the morning mm -hmm. because they are open for the West Coast wow. until like midnight in Hawaii or whatever, so that they can do business out there. So there is a good, there's only like four hours of the day that someone's not there answering the phone. Uh, they go to great lengths to be available for us on the weekends, holidays. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only day I think they are closed again is Christmas day, but you can still, if it's all electronic and you get a proceed, you can still do it. Like yeah. it's just, there's not gonna be a human there. Uh, with New York State, I don't think they're going to care. No. Are they going to be even open on the weekends? Does it say they have to? No. I mean, maybe they're only open between 9 and 5, business hours, bankers hours, and there's nothing we can do about it. And I, I, I'm I, very pessimistic. I mean, number one, I know New York State is not going to build a good website. They mm -hmm. don't know how. I, don't, I think they're not legally allowed to make a good website. <laughs> so it's not going to work well. And I highly doubt. I mean, pick a day of the week, but, you know, Friday at four o'clock, that service goes down. It's done. It's down. They're not – get the guy in on Monday to fix it, you know. The computer guy's in on Monday. But I, I'm, I'm very worried about it. I've been talking to a lot of other dealers. Uh, I was just talking to a dealer on the phone earlier today. He was speaking with one of our ATF guys, one of the better ones. They're all pretty good around here, but one of the ones that's very candid with us and just tells us like it is mm – -hmm. uh, and he said he usually gets one, maybe two FFLs in this region turning their license in. You know, guy retires, just wants to move, whatever. Averages one to two just since January, 14. 14 FFLs. And, I mean, you know, a lot of them, they're probably smaller, just like a guy that has it at his kitchen table. Yeah. But still, they are dealers that are out there providing a service to the public, doing the background checks they want us to do and, and trying to do things the right way. Jumping through the hoops. And the yeah. state is just constantly, I mean, set aside everything else I've already talked about. I've brought it up before on stream. We have to have ridiculous security requirements, yeah. camera requirements. The guns have to be stored either like in these racking or in these locking racks or like the old way we had our store. We would have had to put these guns in a vault like every night. It's absolutely crazy. The ammo kept out of reach of the customer. What the fuck does that even mean? Yeah. There's just there's a million and one things in our way now, both at the individual gun owner level, at the industry level, to try mm -hmm. to support the individual gun owner. I mean, we're really I know this has been thrown around a lot, so I hate to say it, but like we are under attack. This is mm -hmm. this is the most well thought out and coordinated, you know. I mean, they've they've passed gun laws going back say into the 90s when they passed the assault weapons ban in 94 94 federally they passed the federal assault weapons ban goes to 2004 sunsets it goes away federally mm -hmm. new york instantly rolls it over and we have that law in new york yeah. right and then it kind of nothing really happens with gun laws until the safe act 2013 yeah. they passed the safe act there's a lot of things that happen with the safe act that aren't good 
but they're not as terrible as this. The culture still moved on yep. with this. With these last mm -hmm. laws that were passed back in June and July and are taking effect now, they are setting it up to destroy our culture, the Second well, Amendment culture. You can't even buy a pellet, like an airsoft gun, yeah. and have it delivered to you anymore. Like, right? They were trying to Slingshots. scrub. Yep. Yeah, you can't even nope. get a slingshot with an Yeah, you can't. Nope. No, I mean, you can it is like the novelty wooden ones. Yeah, now. they're they're trying to scrub that culture. It's uh, it it's just a ridiculous mm -hmm. uh. And it's, it doesn't work either. It'd be one thing. I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. I still wouldn't be okay with them, but I would at least somewhat understand if we had some type of utopian, like if it was like Japan over here, which is still not a utopia, yeah. but like they think of it as a utopia because there's zero gun crimes, right? Like but people then, can like stab at a time. Former but, prime yeah, minister yeah. just get killed. Right. Yeah. Like it does people, happen. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> if you want it bad enough, it will still happen. Yeah. But in, in the anti-gunner's mind, you know, if this was that, you know, utopia of Japan, there's no more gun crimes now in New York. I could maybe it would be harder for me to argue against the gun laws. Mm -hmm. But all of the gun laws that we have, what do they amount to? We're still like number one almost in the country, like statistically, at least in Monroe County. I know we still have crazy, ridiculous rates of violence like this. The solutions that they put forth made them look good, made headlines, yeah. mm -hmm. but they weren't actual solutions to the problem. Well, you so. see, like, like they'll they'll toot their own horns for it, all these gun laws, but then they'll go and do, like, bail reform or raise the age mm -hmm. where they can't, yeah. you know, you have to, they won't, uh, you know, prosecute anyone under 18 as an adult. So you've seen all these 16 younger kids just yeah. going nuts. And it's like, well, it's what, what are you doing? And, yeah, what yeah. are you doing? They get arrested and they're right back out. Yeah, where... We're a very tough on crime state when it comes to guns, but realistically, other stuff that we're being tough on doesn't matter because yeah. you get slapped with this or that, and they almost just let you go. And because realistically, they don't want the Safe Act challenged. No, that's why they never. You almost never see Safe Act violations. Um, but I really do want to talk about that ammo protest. I love the idea, like, man. Where, where we just uh, even we need sell to. ammo at cost. So I don't know. Something needs to happen. It's uh, it, it, there's not going to be gun stores. There's not going to be, you know, if we look five years down the road, how many of us are there going to be left? You know, I mean, we are in a position where we met most of the requirements already mm -hmm. that they had set forth. This was before the fire, obviously. So we plan on having all those same, you know, we get a, we get a good look at all the requirements set forth, but there's a lot of places that, you know, like there's a there's a great place up in the Adirondacks, uh, Blue Line Sporting Goods in Saranac Lake. They've been there for like a hundred years, and they're just they're not they're just not they're not going to do it. And there there's just it's a real it's a real shame. And every place like that that we lose um, once they're gone, I think it's very hard to get another one to come back. It makes a big I think boy. you know yeah. And then there's there's you know you've got that small gun shop on Main Street, even just existing. The kids, they see it, mm -hmm. you know, they get exposed to it. They, they, they want to learn about it. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, I think, uh, that's what I was going to say. I, I feel bad for us, mm -hmm. but I really feel bad for my kids' generation, yeah. my mm -hmm. grandkids' generation. There's going like, it's just an uphill battle. Yeah. And it's only getting steeper. If it's even accepted because <clears throat> yeah. two generations, if all these gun control laws go into effect and nobody can have it, mm -hmm. It's gonna go away. Like, like there's no way. What's the age now for like that New York doesn't allow kids to even shoot? You have to a be gun. twelve to shoot. Twelve. Yeah. But yeah, you, most kids would probably shoot a gun in the Boy Scouts yeah. or at a camp, and that's not even legal anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. They, as far as I know, they never changed that law, did they? Like you still yeah. can't shoot guns at camp yeah. for kids. Just crazy. You can shoot like pellet guns and stuff, but yeah, that's the the reason that this store exists is rifle merit badge like in scouting that was like i'd always been you know a kid interested in guns mm -hmm. but the first time i shot a real gun was rifle merit badge in boy scouts and that was it that was that was the end of that was the end for me that little bit of burnt gunpowder got in the nostrils and just you know it's like a scene like, from finding Nemo. in the looney tunes <laughs> when they like they float the pies like on the windowsill like yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> uh, um Brett, yeah, you're 100% correct. They seem to be regulating small gun businesses out of business, and it's extremely hard. I mean, New York State, they say they're business friendly. 
I mean, any, any business owner knows it's very difficult. Any business in New York is hard. And then there are some that they are harder and harder and harder. And it, it seems like we're one of those where it's just every day it's more regulations and it's more just nonsense really that that's not gonna, you know, the, the, like the point of contact system for me, obviously it irritates me from a second amendment perspective, but purely from like a tax, from a fiscal perspective, we already pay our federal tax dollars to the Nick center in Virginia. Mm-hmm. It's already there. It costs us millions upon billions of dollars probably. And now we're going to duplicate that system in New York. And New York is one of those states that cooperates with Nick's fully. When you get convicted in a tiny little virgin town, they send those records over ASAP. Mm-hmm. Some states are very bad about it. And like the FBI will have to call like some town in Alabama and be like, hey, get us Jason's records. And they'll be like, come get them. Like, I don't work for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't make, as crazy as it is, like, the FBI can't make them do it. And New York's like, like oh, here's certified right. mail. New York State <laughs> participates fully. We participate. We love licking that particular boot as a state. So they do it. So it's like, I, you know, I, I just don't see the enormous, just bureaucratic waste mm-hmm. for there to be a building and 40 investigators staff. and the staffing, right? The admin. Oh, my God. For the legal just, people doing, like, yeah incredible put all that yeah. energy into gang violence right <laughs> literally put all of that financing into education yeah on on proper firearms and safe firearms handling buy everyone that would want one instead of giving out those shitty f- gun locks that don't work maybe give gun safes out to people so the yeah. gun itself can be locked away whatever yeah. they will they will never uh what, what was that saying? super long comment where'd that okay. go <laughs> uh i want to hit on donna's thing i kind of switching tasks a little sure. bit uh donna Yes, you did win the VHS tape. Uh, I'm sorry I was not here last week. I was kind of a better function. Yeah. But um, yeah, you definitely did win the gun, the uh, the VHS tape. So come in anytime and pick one of those up. I'll even let you pick whatever one you want. Do you want um, to talk about where you were last week at all? Yeah. Um, last week, uh, Thursday to Sunday, I was a counselor for the first time at um, the Finger Lakes Regional Burn Association has a summer camp uh, just a camp for um children that are burn survivors so um that's basically what i was i was counseling um watching little kids uh some of those stories of how some of the children were burned are very oh there were a few times where like i wanted yeah like i wanted to like cry almost like oh you're so cute how um right off the bat uh there was a a firefighter um, we met at a firehouse. Uh, if you saw it on the news, uh, the fireman asks if there was any children from this specific fire here. And Paul, the director of the Finger Lakes Regional Bird Association, says, yeah, they're actually right here. Do you want to meet them? And that was the first time he'd seen them since they were burned as like infants and yeah. children. That's crazy. And like watching them reunite was Right off the bat, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, my heart. Yeah. So it was a great weekend. I definitely grew as a burn survivor myself a lot. And I, I definitely just grew as a human in general. So I'm very, I'm very thankful for that opportunity. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, sorry I missed last week. It's but, cool. Whatever. <laughs> it's cool. Whatever. Uh, but it was very fun. Very fun. Um, Anthony, will the TFP lowers be in before New York State runs their background? I really hope so. Uh, the guys that are finishing them for us said that they should be in this week. It's towards the end of the week. I don't really see them. I have been keeping in contact with them every week. And I assume that when I ask tomorrow or Saturday, if they will be in, I'm going to get next week. I'm really going to start getting a little bit more stern. So they should be in. I know they're being finalized. Now you know what it's like. You were making fun of me because like, When's a new building going up? When's this <laughs> happening? I was like, soon. I nope. can't. And you're like, oh, the this feels this feels just like all your other failed projects that you had to remind me of and throw me under the bus with. And <laughs> now you know how it feels. Now it hurts, doesn't it? When are the lowers going to be here, Ty? When are the lowers going to be here? This isn't failed because it's happening. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. <laughs> there's another week and there's not more lowers. <laughs> I, don't see any, I don't see any building materials out there. Shut up. Tyler, you're the best. How much did you pay Anthony to say that? <laughs> also, John says that you're 
both a good man and a hood man. You know how it be. Which is, you know how it be? <laughs> I wanted to say, like, those both apply. But... I could do both uh, very well. Donna asked, who's working tomorrow and what kind of beer do you want? I'm oh, working oh. tomorrow and... Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> That's for your prostate exam, right? Uh, surprise me if you want. I appreciate you. I bet medically you're probably not supposed to be inebriated for that. For a prostate hmm. exam? I don't know. Probably shouldn't be. I like four locos. Trunks for that. Like the old <laughs> school four locos or the I was real too ones? Young. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a... Uh, those were one of those where, like, yeah, the government needed to step in on that. Like, that was... <laughs> oh, look, government regulation. <laughs> no, people died. So here's some liquid cocaine. Goes, not, not bringing Bud Light. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good stuff. Did you hear that they have to sell off some of their beer companies now? Yeah. yeah. Hauser, they have to start selling off their subsidiaries. Yeah, they are. That's hurt. wild. Like, good job. Like, good job. Yeah. There's a cost to it. <sighs> it's just a can. Well, Sound of Freedom is just a movie. Whoa. That was a good movie. You didn't watch it. Did you watch that? Sound I've not of Freedom? seen it yet. Definitely, if you can, if it's still in theaters, you should go see that. It yeah. was a great movie. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. The the lady and I saw that, and we we definitely loved it. Yeah, Victoria like left the movie, and she's just like, "All right, so when do we when do we like put on masks and?" Mm-hmm. Just start. Go after some oh, yeah. pedos. <laughs> like, let, right now, what, what are you doing? Well, like, I saw a good meme the other day. It was like, you know, <clears throat> all the um, immigrants come in, like, give them, like, pedal hunting licenses and, like, <laughs> turn in the scalps for, like, your citizenship, you know? Kill your local pedophile. I can't see who actually wrote this. It glitched and it just called them View More. I think that's their name. Is it View More? <laughs> He's so written? old. Shut up. <laughs> if, you, if you want to know more about this, see View More. See the rest of the comment. They said uh, New York State is on a mission to completely gut the gun industry in the state, scorched earth style. It's so brazen, it's actually almost admirable in a sick, twisted way. And uh, he's not wrong. No. I mean, it's. Uh, if anybody it, wants to pause oh, no, it. There. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, Wait, I mean, you think about like all the hoops they just make a gu- like, personal gun owner jump through, mm-hmm. and now they're applying that to the you know to the business. A hundred percent. But the weather, it's it's the weather. The weather's really bad in New York, and that's making everybody that's leave. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You know, not the taxes, the eroding, nope. eroding rights, right? This weather like is really bad. Yeah, he did. The state is already known for misreporting people seeking help with what their mental health as being adjudicated as mentally defective. There are a few lawsuits in process. They are covering their asses by moving by removing the federal protection citizens have. And again, very true, Mister Viewmore. <laughs> I'm trying more. to see when our next uh, view more permit class is. Why don't you just go to our website? I, I'm on the fucking website right now. <laughs> That's a really nice looking it's website. August, right? yeah. Who made this website? <laughs> August uh, 26th, August 26th and 7th, we have another uh, permit class. Three ninety nine uh, includes everything: ammo, gun rental, food for both days. Yeah, we buy a lunch both days from two amazing local eateries out here and uh yeah you need to take a class now to get your permit in new york it's an 18 hour state mandated class and uh, i happen to think we put on the best version of that class i have to give a shout out to liberty pumps if you're in an industrial setting or if you need the best sump pump ever made make sure it's a liberty i just pump. got a liberty pump the other day did you really good you're like your sump yeah. pump at your house yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome they, they have helped us Oh amazing literally like four or five days after the fire charlie the owner of that company called me and was just like what can we do like here's how i think we could help what are your thoughts and awesome. we immediately like we had to jump on that they have an absolutely gorgeous um like amphitheater i would call it to like do their their product mm-hmm. training and stuff and yeah show their rep stuff and so, yeah, that's where our, our students are, are very lucky. That's the nicest classroom TFP's ever <laughs> worked out of. So they're very right. lucky in that regard. And uh, John couldn't be happier either. I mean, he really built a nice classroom here in the original TFP. The classroom in TFP 2.0, I'm sure, will be very nice, but not going to be as nice as Charlie's. Uh, that's very, very nice over there. So that's been huge. And, uh, and yeah, um, what else we got here? Only climate making people leave New York State is the political climate. Yes, Jim. Yes. It's very true. That's very true. Comment. I like that one. Um, 
Yeah. I don't. What, what else we got? Let's so, Jason. It. Oh God. Ty. What's your favorite conspiracy? Oh my God. <sighs> Jeez, that's a tough one. That's a hard one. That is a tough one. While you're thinking about that, how's it looking? Oh, no, the fence is. There's just a little drop because it's very, it's very, literally just one little drop. Other than that, it's it's perfect. Ready to go. I'm gonna wipe it. Go stick it in some salt. Ugh. <laughs> it's salty. Bastard. Corrode this. <laughs> I like this knife. That's a nice knife. It's pretty sweet. Is that the equivalent of someone like flicking a revolver closed for you? I hate it. I don't like it. I don't you don't like that? It just it just makes me <laughs> don't like it. That's I actually that's all I do. It's just slap revolvers yeah, closed. Yeah. <laughs> I wake up. You gotta spin it really fast. <laughs> yeah. If you guys want to see me at the public market this weekend, I'll be working the uh flick. The, Sorry. the booth. You I'm will excited. be excited. I mentioned it while you were I heard you mentioning whatever it. Whatever weird stuff you were doing, yeah. What are you doing this weekend? Visiting me on Saturday, right? <laughs> yeah. the Get you some green beans and free some, some milk syrup green punch. beans. Yeah. It's gotta be an interesting uh you know, crowd and like how, how welcoming they might be. You know, mm-hmm. like I would have never they, yes. It was very cool. I mean, the booth is, uh, I, if, if you've been down to the firing pin lately, we've had these two uh, army trailers out front. So, like, I bring one of those. Like, that's that's the booth. And then I'll have, like, a, a camouflage net, like, over top of it. And it, yeah. it definitely, like, there were some comments were like, oh, is the army recruiting today? And it's like, <laughs> no, just nerds here. Just, yeah. you know, yeah. Handing out stickers, you know. the uh, you have your spectrum, but we also have our <laughs> spectrum. <laughs> it's a, we are definitely on a spectrum for sure. All I can think of is like the old uh, Iron Mikes out on like yes. 332. Yeah. Yeah. There really is not a uh, a good military surplus store that I'm aware of in our region. Oh, that there's place was- maybe a, a one out in Buffalo or there's a couple out in Buffalo maybe, but I don't think there's any uh, between here and Syracuse. There's one in Auburn that I know of, uh, but I guess between here and Auburn, like there's there's not one yeah it's, it's a big big yeah. big distance right and i love it because i mean i've always loved any of this kind of stuff it's super cool uh from a business perspective i love that we're always getting different things in mm-hmm. that's one of my pet peeves of going into a store there's a lot of stores that i love but i don't go into them very often because it's like every time i go in nothing has changed mm-hmm. like the last time i was here you had the same exact inventory and that might be cool if that's what i want but uh, I appreciate that about a store when they get new things in that are exciting. So I, I like to do that here. And that's the, the mill syrup is a good way for us to do that. We've got some very, very nice Pelican cases. I'm surprised any of those are still left. I saw one or two still, uh, in the back when I walked in, I think it's cause we couldn't put them outside today cause of the rain. Uh, we got some really cool, like they're literally like two person lifting Pelicans. They're massive. They've got uh, wheels on them, though. You could you could wheel them like luggage. They've got this cool tray that like comes out of the inside. Yeah. Uh, they retail for like six hundred bucks. I want to say new. These are used, but I don't know who. You, they're barely. Yeah. They're, they look mint. Uh, I almost one ninety right off the bat. One ninety nine. We're asking one ninety nine for them. We've got a few of them left. So, we've got ammo cans. Mm. I got actual metal, like. OG military, like with cool markings on them, 10 bucks, <laughs> ammo cans. What else? So did you decide what your favorite conspiracy theory I was? Totally <laughs> <laughs> I moved on. <laughs> Origins of COVID. Good job, Mr. Moore. You did get him with his anonymous Facebook profile. No, I have to know. I got to know. <laughs> did you click view more to no. see? Click it. Click view more. It just says... View Ooh. more. <laughs> Look at that. Is that you? There's nothing. No, to view. it's not me. It's like texting behind me. Like, oh, only, only follows follow. us. <laughs> my man. Adam was a friend. There. Wait, is this my page? <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> was I commenting on the stream as me? Yes. I hope not. Well, you are. Yeah. Was yeah. I really? Yeah. Eh, whatever. For me, it shows up as the firing pin. No, no, it doesn't. It definitely doesn't show up as the firing pin. Yeah, it does. Oh, look at that. There's me. All right, well. Red flagged. Red flagged. Red flagged. Brendan Lewis. Give him the red flag. I'll, Can I commented. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you imagine? What if the FFL gets red flagged? Don't give him ideas. 
it's really hard for me to not argue on Facebook because it's so hard. It's hard not I to. I want to argue a lot. And I argued with someone. You're dumb. I fucking hate you when you're dumb. My profile picture is of me showing Ari when she was little, like really little. She's like a, an infant touching a lever action gun that I'm like, the lever's open. Like, I'm just like showing her like, hey, here. And she's like, ooh, touching it. And someone was like, I'm going to report you for child endangerment for that photo. Good. Go for it, dude. Yeah. Like, they're going to come interview me here and Ari's going to be like cleaning guns. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> right. Clean the barret. Like. the kids on HRT at four. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. What's your favorite fed, conspiracy? Fed, fed. That's a hard question and it changes often. I really like the Operation Paperclip uh, movement where America gathered all of the Nazis post World War II and they started working for NASA. Yeah. And the government that you see today is a shadow government, but really NASA is the true government mm -hmm. and there's like a secret government society like pulling the strings like in warner braun braun or whatever <laughs> like in the background like <laughs> that's like my favorite like theory and like thread to pull um yeah that's... mine lately has been project blue beam which is the Trendy. all the alien stuff so supposedly that is a plot to unite the world under like a one world government type of thing, or like the UN is going to take over because we've got to deal with the aliens. We've got to unite as an earth and well, you can't have guns obviously yeah. like anymore. Like we got to make the whole planet nice and safe because of the aliens. But if there's aliens. Of course I'm having a gun. I'm having a gun. Like I'm getting more guns. Granted, <laughs> like, I don't know anything about the alien anatomy and where to shoot them, but I'd still feel safe. Start with their dick. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever First looks question. the most dick like. Yeah. Are you circumcised? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Gleep Glop, like, <laughs> how do you reproduce? That's where you shoot them. Like, <laughs> telepathically. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tele telepathically reproducing. I pictured uh, it and I don't like it. Now, now you can't. Now they just reproduce. No, I just got reproduced. Yeah, that's how they get you. Oh, my God. All right. Is this is this the end of the stream? Is shooting aliens? Do you have any last minute arm? things? I feel bad because it was just like us talking about mill surf the entire stream. Shut up. It's good. Okay, good. I'm good. If you're satisfied, I'm satisfied. Put metal defense on your old stuff. Yeah, all yeah. your stuff. Metal defense. <laughs> Do you? Can I put like metal defense on my guns and then into an API bag? You can. Um, you should. You should. It's that much more safe. I Especially like that. you know, <clears throat> if it's any kind of like hunting gun, you're ready to go like right out into the field. Well, you know, get to your cabin or whatever. Pull the gun out, and you're good to go right right onto yeah. the elements. Yeah. Uh, John oh, for the asked the last question, do we have any 22 lever actions? <laughs> do we? We have several. A lot of Henrys. Just because we haven't done this in a while. Can we? Can, can are we going to get... Are they going to Are they gonna do it? He's touching. He's doing it. Uh-oh. It's happening. Woo! 399. 399. You know, when we decide to do our protest against the state and you want to do a background check, it doesn't only apply to ammo. If you want to buy a Henry, you can buy a Henry. But I really, I think we're really, we should really have a conversation about running some dumb deal on getting that as many day. people to run a background yeah, yeah. check. Yeah. yeah. Flood we'll the try system. To, we'll try to talk with other stores. Flood like the system. Millions of background checks. We'll define checks. like, we, we'll get one of those, like, what's like the Chiapa, like that little badger, that folding 22. We go for like a hundred bucks or whatever. We just gotta find like the cheapest gun that's plentiful, or like maybe like a like a a, like, a, like a Maverick eighty eight or something. Right, yeah. the, the twenty two is a good idea. Yeah, yeah. So Anything. if you buy a gun and ammo at the same time, do you have to do separate back? I think jets? so, because there's no way you can do a forty four. Now there is some conjecture. You can't use Nix to do a background check. But I wonder if they will allow us because they already give us the forty four seventy threes for free. Will the feds allow New York to use the 4473 form, run it through their own background check system, but it's still that form? Or is New York going to make us, you know, pay and buy Thousand whatever? Bucks yeah, for yeah, a package yeah. Of here's, here's a form you got to print out on your own printer or whatever. Who knows? You guys should think about bringing in some 1022 receivers before the state system. That's a good one. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, if it's just a receiver, Yeah, it's true. Unless you make one. You've got weeks. <laughs> You've got weeks. 
<laughs> that's like me every time they announce one of those buyback programs, the gun buybacks. It's yeah. like, how many little tiny little things can I make? Like, and I never have done that, but mm. you always think about it. Like, I could go to Home Depot tonight. I could cut fifty lengths of pipe. Like, I have three. three I have printer. I have three days yeah. to do this. Well, so like, it's like, what was it? Just like a year or two ago, like some guy scammed them with that. Like, yeah. thousands of dollars. So they changed. That. They changed the rule. They're like, we can't take ghost. Yeah, anymore. yeah. They they changed the rule to now if you bring that stuff, you're only going to get paid for one of them uh, instead of you could bring them a hundred, but you're only getting paid for one. Remember that? Such bullshit. Cool. So keep your ghost Fucking guns. Loopholes. Yeah. yeah. I'll Ooh. take these and go home. Thank you very much. I'll sell the government one. I'll yeah. sell all the rest of them to people. <laughs> for legal reasons, that's a joke. That's, yeah, it's in, <laughs> in Minecraft. Would you like to join my dad's Minecraft server? No. No. What's a dad? <laughs> <laughs> all right see you everybody all right bye if i click this it thank ends you. right hey, thank Much you appreciated. guys ends for you bye Adios. bye oh hold on we got to do our exit hold on hold on let me get there one two three oh, that's the, that's the wrong one it's